Gotta send it. My friends, I've made it to state number two of 50, Arizona. They call it the Grand Canyon State, and I'm gonna need to buy a fly swatter for the van. They are attracted to this thing. As you can tell, the van is still in complete disarray. I need a few hours to be able to clean everything up, organize everything, but I don't have a few hours because you guys emailed me so much when I put out the word that I was gonna try to travel all 50 states. So I've got a couple hundred emails to go through to vet, to see if you guys actually have a plan and it's not just like, hey, hit me up when you're in Delaware. So I'm gonna like go through all those emails and plot them out on a map. So when I'm driving through places, I can be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm near here. I'm gonna hit up this person. They emailed me, they had a real plan and we're gonna make this happen. I'm making my way to Tucson, which I've never been before, and it's gonna be a little snowy at the high, high elevations, but we're still gonna be able to get a big, good ride in because it's like 73 degrees right now. I'm wearing shorts. It's in the dead of winter. USA, USA. Good morning from Mount Lemmon, high above Tucson. We're at 5,900 feet right now, and this is not as high as you can go. As you can see, we're we're at the snow level, at the ice level, so we're kind of doing halfway, would you say, Tim? Partial drop. Partial drop. The lemon drop is kind of the classic ride, kind of like the whole enchilada of Tucson. And Tim is gonna be our ringleader today. He set up very good shuttle math <laughs> with Patrick and Chris here. And uh, we've got a van in the middle for logistics if something breaks, and we got a van at the bottom, and we got a van at the top. Very, very well-planned adventure. Let's do this. These guys are from Phoenix, so they've never seen snow before. I just haven't seen it in a long time. I used to live in Alaska. So. Oh, man. So I know snow pretty well. <laughs> I just got away from it. <laughs> Tim, what do you think about that trust fork there? I think it's almost game changing. Wow. Especially for the riding that we do in Phoenix. It handles lifts and climbs and technical really well. It's worth the wait and worth the, worth the price. There's always more innovation to be had. So this is the Arizona Trail. This is like the Bug Spring Trailhead. We're gonna head from here to Milagrosa. And people say that this is actually the funnest part of the lemon drop, so hopefully we're not missing out on too much. Oh yeah. I'm already sweating. When's the first slip gonna come? I don't wanna die. <laughs> Just cause you have a helmet on doesn't mean you won't die. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Here, hold on. Yeah. Teamwork. This is just screwed enough. There we go. Okay. I got the bike if you want to go. All right. <laughs> All right. I got mine, yeah. Patrick. Oh, my clips are filled with uh. <laughs> Ice! <laughs> it's like dicey. Do I want to clip in or do I want to stay out? Because I'm going to have to be nimble here. Yeah! <laughs> I swear this is a blue trail on Trail Forks. <laughs> Oh God. Wow. That was a little silly. <laughs> oh, no break. <laughs> Slow feathering. Nice. <laughs> How did you even stop? <laughs> Hell of an adventure. Oh, this is going to be no good. 
okay, it wasn't too bad. Spoke too soon. <laughs> My bike tried to go over the bars on its own. Man, sometimes stuff like this can be so demoralizing, but we are actually just flowing right through, not getting too hung up. A couple feet down every once in a while, but it's like flowing, there's the little creek crossing. <laughs> this is just the right amount of crazy adventure. Ice climb number two. The top of Mount Lemmon is at 9,157 feet, which is only the 40th or 41st tallest mountain in all of Arizona, which is mind blowing to me that there's so many big mountains. It is the tallest in the Santa Catalina Mountains though. And it was named after botanist Sarah Plummer Lemmon, who hiked to the top with her husband, E.O. Stratton in 1881. In the O'odham language, it's pronounced something like Babad Doag. Cool. Howdy, howdy. These are the hoodoos. <laughs> this is Arizona style right here. Hectic, rocky. So good. <laughs> Hectic. First cactus spotted. <laughs> I love the sound of the tires clunking away. This is gonna make for a pretty good extended cut on Patreon. Oh. If you didn't know, that's my little private membership club for three bucks a month. You can watch all my videos early and extended. Full Rutledge. Patreon is the main way I support this channel to keep me riding all 50 states this year. Whoa, yeah! And if you're stuck inside this winter on the trainer, once you sign up for Patreon, you unlock a giant archive of videos from the past three years. Probably 300 videos on there. And the extended cuts are usually like 45 minutes long or so. So a lot of good content for spinning through the winter. Ooh. Ha. Ha, 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 ha. Super cool. Super cool. There is only a handful of places in the United States that I haven't ridden that I've heard a lot about. Mount Lemmon, Tucson, this was one of them. Woo -hoo -hoo. Wee -hoo. 
the other one is South Boundary Trail in New Mexico, and that's not gonna be open for a couple months, so I'll do that later this year. It's on the list. Ah, this is real mountain biking, man. People have mountain bikes and they ride their local trails, but unless you've experienced something like this, you're just, oh, it's a different thing. Yes. And if you come out here to Tucson to do this ride, you gotta hit up Homegrown MTB. They're a shuttle service, but they're not just a shuttle service. They're a huge advocate for trail building and keeping trails open and stewardship. They're a big force in the Tucson area to make this a destination, a place where people wanna come and spend their money. If that was the Blue Square difficulty trail, what in the hell are we getting into? This looks like a good place to park the van. I'll get there, I'll get there eventually. I'll be sleeping in the van soon enough. So this area of the trail is called prison camp because starting in 1937, federal inmates were put to work building roads in the area. The campground is named for Gordon Hirabayashi. During World War II, many at the camp were conscientious objectors. Some were Japanese Americans that had protested America's policy of forcing Japanese out of their homes and into internment camps after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Gordon Hirabayashi was a student at the University of Washington in 1942 who challenged the constitutionality of internment based on race and refused to report to an internment camp. He was convicted of curfew violation and sentenced to 90 days in prison in Arizona, but he had to hitchhike there because the government would not pay his way. He served his sentence and then 45 years later, new evidence was dug up that the internments were not based on any military reason. Hirabayashi's case was reheard and his conviction was overturned. In 1999, the campground was named for him and he died in 2012. Patrick up ahead. Said he's only been riding for about two and a half years and he is good. Good morning. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, now we're back to the halfway bailout point. No uh, broken bikes as far as we know. <laughs> no broken bones, no broken bikes. Yeah. No broken spirits. <laughs> No broken windows on the van. I guess I should just crack this Arnold Palmer that I've been carrying around <laughs> in the bag. When in Arizona, back at it. And supposedly this is gonna be a bad hike a bike. Well, it's deep. Okay, I feel good about that. It's not so bad because there's no snow and ice. Right. It is up and up and up though. Whoa. <laughs> Full control. You grabbed your shorts with your uh, yeah. your saddle. Yep. Let's see it. <laughs> he split them. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Woo. Yeah, it's already falling off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the shorts have been removed. Now we went inside out. Internal duct tape. Ooh. Don't let the shuttle fool you. This is a a pretty big ride actually, and this isn't even the whole lemon drop. Look at this. Milagrosa. Oh God, slow speed death. Yeah. 
Oh! Ah, this freaking thing. Damn it. It's just so... Ah, forget it. I'm, I'm over it. That one little thing. This is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Don't have the skills. We have gotten to Saguaro Cactus elevation level. There's the first one. <laughs> now they're everywhere. Ooh, some real furry coyote poop. Very cool. I'm feeling fast. I'm feeling good. Some of this technical stuff that has been really, really tough. So it got me a little bit, but overall, I am feeling confident. And I think I'm gonna need it because we're about to get into some real deep doo-doo. Patrick said this is his favorite part of the trail. Let's see. Oh yeah. And rubber up. Oh, yes. What a day. Gotta send it. Knuckle high cacti. <laughs> this ride is amazing. We've lost the spoke. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this is mystical. Patrick just told me that my videos got him into mountain biking, which is always the highest compliment I can ever get. He said he started on a $600 hardtail and now riding on South Mountain with his new buddies, his new mountain bike friends. He has uh, come full circle. Riding the full squish pivot. Man, he's pretty damn good for only riding for two years. Ooh, yeah. Well done. That's a nope. Lost my momentum. Ah. Ooh, much better line. I got stuck. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Just got full compression at the bottom. <laughs> That's a pretty serious roller, dude. <laughs> Victory. Easily the best ride all year. So after we finished our ride, we headed down to the University Village area, I guess. The University of Arizona is very close to here. Not to be confused with Arizona State. <laughs> Go Wildcats. And we went to this place called Illegal Pete's, which uh, a guy back home really highly suggested it. Got some fish tacos, 
a really, really good way to end the day. That was an incredible ride. That was a really awesome ride. Now, there's gonna be more to come. I've gotta plot out some things. I think I might be staying in Arizona, get one more ride in before I start heading out and finding more adventures. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the trail.